This is Tony from Soundgas. I'm going to run you through changing the tape on a Roland RE201. First, you're going to need a new tape loop, some isopropyl alcohol, cotton buds, and clean hands. So, to get started, you need to remove the screws from the top of the tray. I'll just speed this up. And once they're removed, take the lid off. Most of the machines should have a diagram of how the tape should run, but if not, look closely before you remove the old tape and take a photo if necessary. Remove the old tape. This one had LGR50 in, which we don't recommend for use with Roland 201s. Uh, carefully remove the tape. Um, once you've done that, you're going to need to do some head cleaning. Uh, you need isopropyl alcohol. No other type of alcohol will do. Um, you can buy this from most audio equipment suppliers or online. Get a cotton bud with the isopropyl alcohol and very carefully and thoroughly rub all the heads, the surface of the heads. If they're dirty, you should see brown gunk coming off as you rub them. Make sure you keep rubbing and changing the surface of the cotton bud until it's clean. These heads are obviously pretty clean because there's very little gunk on the cotton bud. Then switch ends or take a new cotton bud and dry the heads off so that there's no isopropyl left on the heads. Uh, you can also check the guides uh, and see if they're dirty. These ones aren't dirty. Um, you want to give the uh, rollers a check and check the capstan. You may well need to turn it on to clean the capstan. Sometimes you get a bit of tape residue building up on those. Now some bass echoes have a trap door at the back to feed the tape through. This one doesn't, so it makes it a little trickier, but it's still quite possible. And now it's time to take the new tape. You can actually put the whole tape into the tray very neatly usually, but I'm going to de demonstrate this as if the tape is not in the tray and as if you've got a, a long spool of tape because it's the more difficult way of doing it. Um, carefully feed the tape in around the guides uh, and around the heads following the diagram or the photo you took beforehand. Make sure the splice of the tape is on the outside, away from the heads. The splice is a small white or silver bit of tape that joins the two pieces of tape together to make a loop. Uh, run the tape through the guides and then carefully through the, where the capstan and the pinch roller meet. And once you've done that, you need to carefully make sure the tape isn't twisted. And then you're going to have to just carefully hold the tape in place using your thumb and forefinger of one hand. Otherwise, as you can see, it just spools straight out of the tray again. So very carefully, where it comes through the capstan and the pinch roller, hold it in place. Then switch the motor on at its slowest setting and let the tape gently feed into the tray. If you have a problem with the tape getting caught on anything as it's feeding in, just stop, switch the machine off, readjust, and then switch on. You can switch the machine on and off a few times. There we go. That loop is now nice and neatly sitting in the tray. No kinks, no twists. It's following the correct path and you can now run it. Uh, it's always a good idea to check with a signal through it just to make sure it's working fine before you screw the tray back on. So now everything's in order. I'm just going to um, screw the tray back on. Let's uh, speed it up for you there. And uh, that should now all be working perfectly. Pretty simple. Uh, any problems, watch the video through a couple of times.